1977 Hot Wheels. It was a really exciting year to collect them and it's exciting to collect these old vintage cars even still. With so many different castings, over 50, and a total of 80 flying color cars to collect, as well as 17 super chromes, it'll keep you busy. Some of these are quite rare and hard to find nowadays, especially in really good condition. As most of this collection is near mint, you'll be able to see all of these examples just as they were on the shelves back in the day, including a variety of playset exclusive cars, six pack exclusives and a promotional car which we'll get into in a moment. These cars featured often black wall wheels and red line wheels as in this year red lines were being phased out and the black walls were being transitioned in. Let's go on a little exploration of these old cars. First we'll look at each and all of them just with their name for the most part in alphabetical order, however I have listed all of the cars in the front here that had a red line and black wall counterpart first. And at the back, as the year went on in 1977, the black walls were the only wheels available and many models did not come with a red line wheel. So those will be at the back of this flying color assortment. Let's start our tour with these awesome and very colorful flying color cars. From there we'll work our way over into the Amazingly Shiny Super Chrome series. 31 Doozy. 56 Hightail Hauler. Backwoods Bomb. 57 Chevy. Baja Bruiser. Buzz Off. Fire Eater. Several paint variations here to look at in a moment. Funny Money. GMC Motorhome. One of my personal favorites. Low Down. Makes a reappearance. Letter Getter. Odd Rod. Two color variations here to look at. Paramedic. Based on the Super Van, of course. Several yellow variations to look at. Roger Dodger. Second Wind. Show Haas 2. Spoiler Sport. T Totaler. Top Eliminator. Z Wiz. And now into the black walls only. There were no red line counterparts released in 1977 for these vehicles. However, you may remember some of them from previous years, such as the American Hauler, American Tipper, American Victory, Chief Special, Cool One, Corvette Stingray, Emergency Squad, Ferrari 312P, Formula 5000, Formula Pack, Gun Bucket, Gun Slinger, Ice T, Inferno, Jet Threat 2, Caribou, Maxi Taxi, again featuring a yellow variation there, Mercedes C111, Monte Carlo Stalker, Neat Streeter, P917, Paddy Wagon, Poison Pinto, Police Cruiser, Ramblin' Wrecker, Red Baron, Rockbuster, Sir Rodney Roadster, Street Rotter, Khaki Cooler, Torino Stalker, Twin Mill, that concludes the flying color assortment. Let's take a quick look at the names of the Super Chromes released in 1977 before we go into our in-depth video on each of these castings and their interesting variations and notes that I have on them. In the start we have the Alive 55, Chevy Monza 2 Plus 2, 
Corvette Stingray, Formula 5000, Gremlin Grinder, Heavy Chevy, Large Charge, Mighty Maverick, Mustang Stalker, Neat Streeter, P911, Poison Pinto, Rockbuster, Steamroller, Supervan, Prowler, and Twin Mill. And the video will conclude with details on these five extremely rare vehicles. Another Buzz Off staff car, P911, and Thrill Driver cars. As we go through this collection of Hot Wheels, I will be once again attaching a price guide of sorts to it. And use this as a guide, it's not meant to be set in stone. The prices I'm attaching are from what I, in my experience, I've paid for the cars that you actually see in my collection, which in many cases I've bought several times in varying conditions up until the point that you see them now, which is now near mint. So over the last 10 or so years, I've bought the cars at bottom grade, mid grade, and now what I consider a high grade collection or near mint. So that's where I'm getting my experience on the pricing, and the prices I attach are for an exact mint, like a 10, a number 10 condition car. So if you find the prices to be a bit high, you do have to modify that price substantially for condition. Condition is the most important thing with any collection of vintage nature or anything really, and it's no exception with Hot Wheels. So if you have a number 10 car or dead mint, it's going to be worth at least 10 times as much as a car that's even in medium condition, just because it's so much harder to find that mint car. They just don't come up for sale very often. The other thing I'm using for my price guide is even after I purchased cars or while I was shopping for that car, I record the prices of other sales that have happened on eBay. And I only use eBay because here in Canada, that's basically the easiest way to buy vintage cars in my experience. So, and it's a fairly good indicator of supply and demand at any given point in time. These are not like new cars where you can just decide, hey, I want a collection, I'm going to go online and buy them. These older cars you have to wait and shop and hunt for until they become available. So in closing, I'm just going to quickly show you what I've got on the computer screen back here. Uh, just an example of the pricing that I've looked at and some of the notes I keep on these cars. Yeah. The example I'd like to show you is for a heavy Chevy, which I have quite a bit of recorded data on, as I was hunting this car for quite some time. This is the actual car I now have in my collection representing the display wall. And the particulars on it, it's a Super Chromes number 42. A lot of this information came from the old Hot Wheels collector's database as far as the particulars such as that. And then the recorded values came from the uh, old South Tex Texas Diecast uh, website which has now drastically changed for the worse. And the recorded values here are my actual inputs of the price I've seen this car sell for with the dates. 148 US dollars for a C10, that's mint example, in 2011, April 2011. $89 US, uh, that was in C8 condition. So, you know, pretty good condition, probably about the same as mine back in January 2015. And 82 US dollars, again, it sold for, uh, and that was a mint example. So, for my price guide, I would say this vehicle is worth anywhere between $80 and $100 mint based on the fact that it doesn't come up very often and if someone's out collecting it, they're going to be willing to spend uh, you know, between the minimum that I've seen it sell for and probably slightly more uh, in account for inflation on these cars. As Hot Wheel collections of this nature are not devaluing, they have been steadily going up in price throughout the years I've been collecting. An example of how I buy cars over and over again in better and better conditions for my collection has resulted in this massive storage containment system which is just literally packed full of Plano cases full of Hot Wheels itemized by year and vehicle casting and I'm just going to slide one of these out to give you an example of how many of these cars I've purchased which has contributed to my personal price guide. What better example than to look for 1977, my duplicate cars. We'll move the 1978s 
or at least a few of them out of the way. And from here to here, I've got three Plano cases filled with 1977 duplicate cars that have passed through my main collection wall. This is the main collection display wall. Note that the five Plano cases you see emptied there are the 1977s on the table currently. And uh, as it goes through the years of course, but we know about that already. So let's get back down to 1977 and just see what cars have pass through the display wall at some point before being parked here in favor of a more minty display worthy car in my collection and another box full of emergency squads fire eaters Duesenbergs. so many of these cars I've had to purchase over and over again until I think this was my first that was my first Baja bruiser it was pretty messed up Got a lot of chips on it. First Redline Baja Bruiser I purchased. I think I probably got that one in a bulk lot of vintage vehicles, but for something in that condition, um, I would attach a value of about maybe five to ten dollars, really, at the most. Probably more like five bucks. But um, that's what uh, that's what I would pay for this now. It doesn't mean that's what I paid. I could have paid perhaps twenty dollars for that car if it was the only one available at the time for sale on eBay. But here again is a slightly better condition one, and a Baja Bruiser in that condition I would probably price at around at least twenty to twenty-five dollars, being in very nice shape with the, all the tampo still complete. There's a Blackwall version. Those are actually slightly tougher to find. So the prices are basically the same for Blackwall and Redline. Now we're looking at my mint examples of both the Redline and Blackwall Baja Bruiser. And when I say mint, I mean there are no chips really on these. There might be a flea bite here and there. Tampos are perfect. You'll note that the bases are shiny for the most part, at least untarnished. That one is very shiny, as it should be for a mint example. And so in this condition, these vehicles are worth anywhere between $75 and $100 a piece. That just goes to show you how much more expensive the vehicles become when the condition goes up. While all Hot Wheel cars do have a story to tell, some have more of a story than others. So in this video, I will really only tell you what I know about some of the more interesting models. And other ones, I'll just have my price guide attached to it. The 31 Doozy is based on a 1931 Duesenberg. Quite a fancy car back in 1931. This one here, of course, is the Red Line and Black Wall versions available. As are all the vehicles up until we get to the back row, starting with the trucks there. The American Hauler and American Victory. So the first four rows, there's gonna see, you're going to see a red line and a black wall alternate for each car. The only difference between these two vehicles is those wheels. There's no other difference to note, and that is often the case with many of these vehicles. The red line version is a lot more uncommon nowadays than the black wall. And, you know, a black wall doozy like this one might run you about 5 10 bucks at the flea market. Uh, it's in really nice shape, this one, so it depends really how sh how shiny you want the base to be. And a Redline version might fetch anywhere between $30 and $50. The Hightail Hauler, which is based on an old Ford pickup truck, is a popular casting. And the Redline version is, once again, worth more than the Black Wall. A mint example, which this one is not completely mint, would run anywhere between $75 and $100. This one being in very nice condition with only a few chips and some wear on the tampos and wheels would be worth around $50 still because of the popularity of the casting and the scarcity of the truck. A Blackwall version would be worth around again $5 or $10 most likely. Over to the Backwoods Bomb. Both these vehicles are quite hard to find actually in really good condition. It took me quite a while to get a near mint Blackwall version I think the only non-mint aspect of this is a paint flashing issue on the window 
and a chip on the front A pillar. The red line is in darn close to mint condition, other than some slight wear on the red line wheel. But these vehicles, for a price guide, would be worth around $60 a piece in my experience. The 57 Chevy is also a very popular casting. The Blackwell version is quite easy to come by. Uh, in mint condition such as this, this is completely dead mint condition, it's not quite as easy to come by in this sort of condition. And when I price it I based according onto this condition. This car here would be worth around $20 to $25 and the also equally mint version of the red, the red line version cost me I'm pretty sure it cost me about $80 and I would assign a value anywhere between $70 and $100 on that car alone. You will find that it's a fairly easy vehicle to find on eBay for instance but not in dead mint condition. The Baja Bruiser, a somewhat difficult vehicle to find in very nice condition. These ones are both close to exact mint condition other than a couple of chips. They both feature shiny chrome bases, such as you would see when they are new. And actually, the Blackwall version of this vehicle is harder to find than the Red Line. However, the pricing still is not reflective of that. In most cases, the Red Line will cost you more than the Blackwall at around $75 in mint condition. A Blackwall version will run you around $50 or $60 if you can find one in mint condition. If you can find one. The buzz off is not overly expensive. A red line version would cost you around $20 or so, $25 maybe. And a black wall version can easily be found for anywhere between $5 and $10 in nice condition. Not that buzz off though. More on that later. The Fire Eater, one of the most common and reproduced castings from Hot Wheels throughout the years ever often without too much of a signal as to which year they were from. And I will clear that up for you because it was quite a dilemma to get these vehicles to be purchased for this collection through online means and to be sure that they were the ones I actually wanted and not like, for instance, a 1982 release of the Fire Eater which looks exactly the same. The telltale difference for an original Fire Eater from 1977 is what it says on the base. It has to say Hong Kong, and it has to look just like this. Fire Eater, Hong Kong. All these trucks feature the exact same base, and newer ones will feature Malaysia or some sort of copyright or even a Hot Wheel logo. So the base does tell a lot with these vintage collections. And here we have three versions of the Fire Eater. I'm actually missing one for a total, there should be four. In the front two here we have the dark red paint variation and this third one here is the bright red paint variation which would be seen from here on throughout the years. The dark red was dropped after this year. Not sure if it was a mixing batch issue or what. The dark red is also seen on the American Tipper yet not on the Chief Special which is also red. So different colors of red were used for different vehicles and in total there seems to be two different types of red just as there are two different types of yellow which we'll get to in a moment. Either way the red line version here in this sort of condition is worth anywhere between fifty and seventy five dollars which is dead mint. A black wall version in dark red can be found at times anywhere between ten and thirty dollars although like I said it's very difficult to find and differentiate between the different colors of red when you're looking at them online. The bright red version is the most common and can be found fairly easily for five or ten dollars just with random luck. A bright red red line version, I don't know if it exists or not, but it should be parked next to it. I've still been looking for it and I have not seen one yet. Next to those we've got the Funny Money. This is a cool, very cool casting. Funny car style, double engine, roll cage, all metal with a pivot hinge on the back and a lot of copyright information on the base including the name Funny Money. This is an old casting that goes way back into the I think the early 1970s around 1970 or so. 
It is painted gray and has the authentic Brinks security tampos on it, which I think is quite nifty. Redline version is worth more than the Blackwall version at around $75, and a Blackwall version can be found usually for around $25. As we move on to the GMC motorhomes featuring the Palm Beach Tampa work, these are very heavy castings, extremely heavy. All metal, of course, as most of the vehicles in this year were. There's something of note here with the Redline version being extremely hard to find and may have only been found in a six pack exclusive of these vehicles. I don't think it was a blister find at any point in time. So, it is extremely uncommon and unfortunately most often forged or counterfeit if you're buying these secondary you want to well of course you're buying them secondary but you definitely want to check the base and the axles to ensure you're getting an authentic red line I'm gonna put both of these upside down next to each other since nobody would bother to drill out a black wall base and reassemble it here is what a stock rivet should look like that is the biggest indicator of a faked vehicle as often that single rivet will be drilled out all three axles will be replaced with red lines donated from a less rare model and reattached so here we're looking at the red line rivet which as you can see looks exactly the same as the black wall rivet no other signs of tampering the next thing to check is the axles your vehicle, if it is in nice shape like this, should roll very well. Just as the black wall example does, so does the red line. No wobbles, no signs of looseness. What happens is sometimes certain people will cut the axle behind the wheel and insert new axles, which will feature, in most cases, not a round head at the end of the axle. So you want to check those axles carefully both sides to ensure it has a stock factory nickel coated looking axle with no chopped or squared off looking heads on the ends of the axle indicating a cut or a crimp. And of course if you have a black wall example next to it to compare that's the best. And you can see the axles look exactly the same. There's no way that this could have been forged. And I certainly hope not because it cost me 300 US dollars to buy that version, even with the big ugly chip on the roof. Otherwise, this vehicle is near mint and extremely hard to find. A black wall version, just due to the popularity, in mint condition such as this, would still be worth between 30 and 50 dollars. On down to the lowdown. This Monte Carlo Stalker, titled Lowdown, on the packaging anyways, doesn't have a name on the base. Features extremely shiny gold paint throughout with the interwoven tricolored ribbon tampo. In mint condition, which this one is close to but not quite due to some hairline scratches in the tampos, this car is worth anywhere between $60 and $90. The Blackwell version is worth between $30 and $50 in mint shape, which this one is in, just about. I would put this one at a C9 condition. The Letter Getter makes its debut for 1977, a very popular casting which is still to use this day, with great coverage on the sides for all sorts of Tampa work and artwork, sponsors and whatnot. It features black plastic doors which can be forced open but usually at the expense of the plastic. Solid metal base. One single rivet at the front. The bumper holds the base at, and body together at the back. This black wall version in mint condition is worth around $30 to $50 because they are so hard to find in this top number one condition or number 10 condition I should say. But you can find ones with a whole bunch of you know edge wear on them and chips and stuff that still look great for cheaper than that. The red line version of this one I do not have. I actually have bought one but it was a forgery so I didn't even bother putting it out here back before I knew what to look for. 
So this redline version of this vehicle would be worth anywhere between four and six hundred dollars if you could find an authentic version, which I have seen it sell for before in the past, very rarely. Just noticing this one has some big scratches on the side. So maybe not dead mint after all. They're not scratches, they're just tampo, tampo wipes. At any rate, I am just too afraid to buy a redline version of this vehicle because they are so easily forged. And I, it, as we go through here, I did get burned on a red line. The T Toddler, very rare version of that in red line, is actually a forgery. And I put it out here just to show you because it is a very good forgery. And I didn't know until after I received it and had spent two hundred and seventy-five dollars for it. Left positive feedback and everything, so there was no going back. I just decided to chalk it up as an expensive lesson learned. We'll get to that as we get to the fourth row, but next up, the Odd Rod. The Odd Rod is indeed a odd looking hot rod. And it came in two different color variations. Note that these have a plastic body here. Plastic yellow body with a plastic chrome front nose piece over a metal chassis and a very substantial heavy metal motor piece mounted sideways with some radiators forward of each back wheel highly unusual they kind of look like mud flaps at first sight but uh, on the wrong side of the vehicle they are indeed radiators four exhaust pipes at the back it's actually a very interesting little vehicle and a whole bunch of maybe gas tanks and stuff under batteries and whatnot under the clear nose section of the vehicle. It's upside down but it says odd rod there. A red line version in mint condition such as that would set you back at least fifty dollars. A black wall say about twenty dollars. Now the purple examples here which took me quite a while to get both the red line and black wall versions are extremely rare. They were available on a blister. I have seen them in blister package for sale on eBay before at the tune of $1,000. This red line example here set me back $350. Keeping in mind that the only difference between this, ver this purple one and the yellow one is that tiny little piece of purple plastic around the seats. Not easily painted though because it's plastic. This black wall version is also equally as hard to find as that red line one and set me back around the same price. I think this one was $300. I've seen these sell a couple of times throughout the years, but very rarely do they come up. The body is attached with that little clip and somehow snugly fit between the two metal casting pieces. So as 3D printers come online you'll want to be careful that you don't end up buying a 3D reprint of this type of car check the rivets of course I think this vehicle would have to be taken apart to modify the body with a purple one either case I bought these from a reputable collector and I am certain that they are authentic the paramedic van this one features the yellow paint variation we've got dark yellow paramedic vans here and lemon bright yellow paramedic vans here. Side by side you can see the dark one on the right and the light one on the left. Overall all of these vans are equally hard to find for the red lines of course being slightly harder to find than the black wall versions. Red line vans of these types will run you around thirty to fifty dollars per vehicle in mint condition and the black wall versions between ten and twenty dollars in mint condition. On to the Roger Dodger. This is a gold chromey type car much like the lowdowns ahead of them although a slightly lighter gold. The red line version is worth around fifty to seventy dollars in completely mint condition. This one it does show some signs of wear and I think it set me back around $35, maybe $40. The black wall version in mint condition is worth around $25. Second wind. Red line version, very hard to find compared to the black wall version. 
Blackwall is any day pretty much like a $5 car, even in terrific condition. The Redline one set me back $100. It is a very tough Redline car to find. Showhaas 2. It's a Mustang funny car. Features an opening body, revealing engine and roll cage. And while we've got it open, note how the axles are pinched with the factory pinch. We're going to talk about forgeries once again. This casting was also available in a Redline version. I've seen a lot of Redline versions sell on eBay over the years. I've never actually bought one because I would say that 90% of the Redlines that you see sell are forged. And the reason why is because the original Redline version of this vehicle is extremely rare and hard to find. We do have a paint variation here, lemon yellow and dark yellow once again. The black walls in this type of mint condition are also extremely hard to find. In completely mint condition, these vehicles are worth anywhere between $50 and $100 a piece. However, often you can find them with some chips and edge wear for much less than that. I wanted a mint example of both of these vehicles for my collection. The red line versions, of course, you don't even need to drill the body out to take the axles apart and someone carefully could take the axles out without cutting them by releasing them at the pinch points. So that's why I don't have a red line version of that one either. A red line version I've seen sell anywhere between three and six hundred dollars. On to the spoiler sport. Red line version worth about 40. Green line or green line black wall version of this will be worth about five to ten dollars. Interestingly, the spoiler sport will be released in later years, but it won't feature the double windows at the back. It'll feature one big window instead of the two narrow windows. The two narrow windows were only found in 1977. The tea toddler. This was an expensive lesson, as I hinted at earlier when we were talking about the GMC motorhome. Blackwall version. Gold plastic chrome base. Single rivet. This rivet looks slightly different than the ones used with metal bases. As you can see, it has a concave type divot look. That's an authentic rivet on the black wall, which is worth about $10 to $20 in mint shape. Here's a red line version, which I spent somewhere in the neighborhood of $275 to $300 for, or something like that. And it had pictures of the base. Looks really good, doesn't it? Some people would argue that this is a real one, but I'll go on to explain why I don't think it is. This thing is in terrific condition all around. The base, even the wheels look to be in really good shape. The red lines aren't worn out. The paint isn't, the base isn't worn out. But wait, what's going on with these wheels? Why are they hanging around like that? And also look at, look at all the marks on them. Looks like somebody grabbed them with a pair of pliers maybe pinched them off or did something funny and looking at the back of it look how mutilated it is so clearly I should have returned this thing on the spot focus the wheels should never be that loose wonky and mutilated compared to the rest of the condition of this teetotaler a highly unfortunate expense it doesn't even barely roll the back wheels don't even turn on account of how mutilated everything is Look at that back wheel. Shouldn't be hanging like that on a brand new Hot Wheel. Very disappointed in the purchase of that vehicle. And that was the last Redline vehicle I purchased for 1977 and beyond that had a black wall exact same counterpart. Too many forgeries. I think I just got lucky with this one. Very, very lucky. Top Eliminator. Gold Chrome. Opening body with roll cage. This interesting car will be released again in 1978. The only difference being then is that in favor of this little blue tampo on the back, there will be a red circular tampo with AC inside of it. So the only indicator that this vehicle, other than the red line version of course, the only indicator of the black wall version being from 1977 is that little tampo and not from 1978. The red line version, of course, this is the only version of it as red lines were phased out by 1978 completely. 
and will set you back around fifty to seventy five dollars mint this one will be about twenty five to fifty dollars mint neither of my examples are perfectly mint so those are actual prices that I paid the Zedwiz chalk it up to JDM fans or perhaps just a rare car the redline version is quite hard to find especially in mint condition and of course be wary of forgeries this one is not a forgery I believe I spent hundred and twenty dollars for this car which I reckon to be a bargain considering it's authentic the black wall version can be found quite often for ten to twenty dollars in good condition note that this one does have a rivet on the front and a clip on the back the Zed Wiz is of course based on a Datsun 280Z now as we look at the black wall versions only there are no redline counterparts released in 1977 for the following vehicles at the back the back three rows that we're about to look at the pricing on these vehicles is quite substantially lower than the redline counterpart versions and all of these vehicles have been seen before in the 1974 to 1976 lineup with redline wheels there is no difference between these and those there are only a few in here that are of a notable value and rarity which I will highlight as we look through them so without being rep repetitive We've already known the names of these. We'll just skim through the looks of them all. These are all in exactly very nice mint condition. C10 for the most part. Only a few have chips. The reason being is that, being easier to find, I went for premium quality in this collection where I could. Now the Monte Carlo Stalker is one of the examples of a tough car here. The lemon yellow version is the easier color to find versus the darker yellow version. The darker yellow version for some reason is very hard to find in my experience and most often when I bought these cars and I have several now in my Plano storage box of duplicates that are lemon yellow. The yellow variation also exists for the Maxi Taxi. I can't remember but one of those was harder to find I'm not sure which it could just be luck of the draw but it seems that some yellows are rarer than other yellows the green caribou this one came all the way from Japan let's just back up for a second here you may have noticed this interesting caribou box before well these two came together The box, interestingly, shows a red line caribou on it. However, the only reason I even knew to look for this car, and it took me years to find this dead mint example, I've never even seen a beat up version, was because on the old HotWheelCollectors.com database website, which no longer exists, there was a picture of a grainy old black wall and I just always kept the old caribou in the keyword search until one day it popped up the only black wall caribou I have ever seen in real life check your rivets if you do find one after this video this is an extremely tough car to find I spent fifty dollars on this car but I would venture to say it is worth a lot more than that and I definitely wouldn't part for it for any less than a three digit number if I was selling them which I'm not also surprisingly rare however it does show up from time to time is a black wall version of the jet threat this purple or plum color jet threat 2 was released with red lines previously just like all the other cars but for some reason the black wall version is very hard to find however not expensive I spent about twenty dollars for this one it's in near mint condition features two rivets there's one for sale currently at the time of filming for this online for twenty dollars however if you look up purple or plum jet threats you'll notice there's about twenty red line versions for sale and only the one black wall it took me a long time to find that black wall next we've got the inferno well like I said we've already gone through the names this Jeep here 
or gunslinger as it's called of course features the clip which we've discussed on the redline version in the previous video a tough little vehicle to find still even in blackwall version in nice shape as is the police cruiser that's a tough one to find in really good shape as well and would be worth more than most of these others the Ramblin' Wrecker, again, not featuring the phone number of Larry Wood on the side. It's been blanked out. Red Baron features a rounded off nub on the helmet for safety reasons. And the remaining cars in the lineup. The Khaki Cruiser, or Khaki Cooler, is a military six-pack vehicle as well as occasionally a blister find. It's a tough one to find even in Blackwall version and will run around $30 to $40 in mint shape. And the old Torino Stalker is a tough and valuable car to find as well, probably due to popularity. Its pricing would be about the same in mint condition. So let's get on to the Super Chromes. We've got 17 different Super Chromes to look at, several with wheel variations, most without. The Alive 55 was one of the few that had a red line and black wall variation. These are pricey cars to find in super shiny mint condition. When you're looking at condition and pricing for super chromes, it all comes down to how shiny is that metal still. As the more played with and displayed even versions often have tarnished bodies showing a more gray look to them, which we'll look at on the Neat Streeter at the back. It's kind of gray and tarnished compared to some of my shinier models here. The Alive 55s are worth anywhere between $75 and $100 in shiny red line condition such as this. Black wall will be worth about $30 to $50. And the Monza, often a lot of these cars you've seen as well in red line in previous years or well the, the previous year, the only other year so far that had super chromes including the Monza, the Corvette, well, basically all of these cars, except for the ones I'm going to note. Monzas are nice. I like those little Monzas. Corvettes. These cars are all worth anywhere between $20 and $40. Gremlin Grinder. Very nice, shiny version. There's that heavy Chevy we looked at. It's got Redline or Blackwall version available. Redlines are worth $80 to $100. Blackwalls are near the same. About 50 to 60 maybe for that car, but it is in supreme condition. Hard to find these cars in such nice shape. Loose anyways. And if you're buying them in the package on the blisters, still very expensive. Mustang Stalker. Redline and Blackwall version of the Mustang Stalker. Blackwall is a little bit more tarnished in my case. The Redline, worth anywhere between $100 and $150. Blackwall about 75 the neat streeter in mint mint condition worth about 75 to a hundred dollars this one is quite tarnished I think I spent about thirty dollars on it and the P911 poison pinto the steamroller is a vehicle of note and not because of redline or blackwall this did come out in redline in 1976 these ones are both blackwall but here, finally an example to show you a steamroller with the seven stars on the front versus just the three stars across the front on this one. Seven star versions of the steamroller are a lot more rare and expensive than the three star versions. Whoa, don't roll off my table. Seven star worth about two hundred dollars, three star worth about twenty dollars. Super Chrome, Super Van. All metal on this one. Only a metal base was found for the Super Chrome van. Never seen a chrome plastic base on that one. And the final two. Prowler. Twin Mill. My Twin Mill Super Chrome Blackwall is in nice shape, unlike my red line. Finally, let's take a look at some of the rarest cars that I have for 1977. The staff car with black walls. Harder to find than the red line staff car released in the six packs from 1976. 
Wikipedia actually lists that this car was never found in a six pack so someone's experience not sure I can't really say to that because I have a loose collection not sure if anyone has seen this in a six pack or where it came from it was never found in an individual pack and apparently these only started showing up years after people found the red line ones so very very rare car I spent three hundred dollars on it I'd venture to say in this condition which is very nice condition would be worth more than that nowadays as that is typically what the red line versions sell for very nice example hard to find they don't come up for sale very often next we've got the Porsche 911 with this swirl on it this is the same tampo as we saw in the super chrome however on the black version this is an exclusive car to the turbo blast 600 playset as you can see it came with two cars the second car was just one from an assortment a mainline car that is easy to find this was an air powered pump set where you blast two cars around a two lane wide racetrack with some little jumps and a crossover for crashing and now a pair of thrill drivers these Torino stalkers Feature white or red paint with the same tampo on the sides only. Basic base. Unfortunately, my red one has a little bit of wear on it. They are tough cars to find. This pair set me back. I didn't buy them as a pair, but uh, the red one set me back $50 even in that condition. In mint condition, I've seen it sell for as high as $150. And the white one here sent me back $125. It seems to be slightly more valuable than the red version. Although the cars are in equal numbers, they were sold together in the same playset, so that's kind of strange. The white one I've seen sell for as high as $225 in completely mint condition. The Thrill Drivers Corkscrew playset, which I only have an image of online. And it featured dual loop-de-loops. Two lanes wide with two elastic power band pullback starters at the beginning of the race the full set is hard to find but not impossible like the Turbo Blast 600 playset the final car I have is this prototype of a buzz off it's got the same type of tampo minus the gold one in the center it's like a beetle shape the opening back This car is extremely rare. Only ever seen it the once. Only even knew about it from the old Hot Wheel Collectors database website. Listed value on the old Texas Diecast Collector site was $900 for this thing mint. I bought this with a group of three other extremely rare vehicles, including a blue super van, for around $500. Uh, I think I got a pretty good deal because. I haven't seen this car for sale before and even though it has a few little chips and nicks it's a nice display worthy prototype which is unknown numbers unknown rarity except all I know is it's very hard to find so I hope you enjoyed this 1977 video It was a bit longer as I wanted to discuss several other topics as well as look at a very large assortment of cars and uh, 1977 definitely filled the cases of kids everywhere back then and emptied the pockets of parents with just the sheer number of cars that were available in this year and as we'll see in the next video in 1978 a lot less selection as cars were re-released throughout the years from 1977 into 78 and very few new cars however a few new castings for 78 to look forward to which will be of interest so we'll get all these 77's put back on the wall and move on into 1978